Hi, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today I'm going to continue uh, with the nutrient series. So we're going to talk today just about some basic terminology before we get started on individual nutrients. So before we get started, we need to understand that all of our nutrients come into our system for the most part as an organic solid, okay? So feed goes into the system and it goes to our fish, right? And our fish are either eating this feed or they're not eating this feed, okay? The stuff that they're eating is kind of being digested in their gut and uh, they're, of course their feces contain organic solids. And we also, of course, have um, excess feed that's uneaten. And this also constitutes um, these organic solids that enter our system. So the fish are pooping, and we also have a lot of feed that's uneaten, and we end up with organic solids. So these solids are being produced, and as they're metabolized, whether it's by our fish, whether it's by microbes in our system, or whether it's just uh, chemically in our system, the reality is, is that these solids become inorganic nutrients eventually. And uh, when we're talking about inorganic nutrients, then we're talking about organic nutri or inorganic nu nutrients that are not attached to an organic molecule. So this would be nitrate, phosphate, potassium ions, uh, chloride ions, uh, uh, copper and zinc ions in our solution. All of these things, uh, they're, they're not attached to these long carbon chains, uh, you know, to these organic molecules. So these organic solids, once they're in their system, whether they're coming from our fish or whether they're being broken down and metabolized in our system, all of them um, essentially, eventually, become inorganic nutrients. Now sometimes this is through the microbes, sometimes it's through other organisms in our system, sometimes, uh, you know, it's just chemical. But the reality is, is as these are oxidized and mineralized uh, by our microbes, they end up becoming the inorganic nutrients that are able to feed our plants. So these inorganic nutrients then are what float around in our system water and are actually taken up by the plant most of the time. Um, they're also taken up by algae, they're also uh, consumed by other organisms in the system. So when we talk about the nutrients going into the system, we have to understand how these nutrients um, interact with the organisms in our system and where they end up. Not everything that we put into our system will be available to our plants. So first off, if we put feed into our system, oftentimes the nutrients in that will never get to our plants. It will leave the system um, before it has a chance. So ways that it can leave the system are either, you know, if it's, if it's a nutrient that the fish assimilates and we harvest the fish, it's gone. It's out of the system. Uh, if it degasses, so if it's, if it's a, a, a chemical that turns to gas and goes into the atmosphere, it's gone from the system. If water dumps out on the floor and it contains these nutrients, it's gone from the system. So some of these nutrients are gone before they get to the plant. Other nutrients in the short term are tied up. Now these uh, are these nutrients here can be tied up by uh, algae, they can be uh, you know, caught up in this algae, the algae dies, uh, one of our red worms eats the algae, and now uh, these nutrients are inside of our red worm, but they're part of a larger, more complex cycle. So the nutrients that, that end up being tied up organically in our system are oftentimes um, available in the long term, but not always available in the short term. Now, I'll talk about this in more depth in the blog post, but this can be kind of a frustrating part of the process for a lot of beginning aquaponics folks because you're putting nutrients in, but maybe you're just cycling your system and you've got this big algae bloom and uh, all the nutrients that you're putting in, they're not all ending up uh, available to your plants. Oftentimes, you're just feeding these kind of secondary organisms inside your system. So that's important to understand. Available in the long term, not always available in the short term. So the third thing that can happen to our system, uh, nutrients in our system, is that they can be available, but available in the system, but not available to the plants. So these are things like precipitates. Okay, so in the system, but not available. And uh, this is really most common. Most people are. Uh, most uh, familiar with the process of precipitation. 
Um, so if we're talking about iron, oftentimes we're talking about precipitates. Uh, as I talk about potassium and even phosphorus, I'll talk about calcium-based precipitates. But precipitates are basically just inorganic solids that uh, end up in our system. And if it's a solid, it's not dissolved and it's not available to the plants. So even if we're, say, putting in a lot of iron, um, it might be the wrong form of iron. And definitely check out the iron video uh, that we did a while back to understand that a little bit better. So it's important to understand that not everything we put in is going to end up with the fish. Some of it's going to dis or with the plants. It's going to disappear. It's going to get tied up in the short term, or it's going to end up as a precipitate oftentimes. And uh, what exactly happens to it here depends on how we run our system. And uh, I'm going to talk about all of this in a little bit more depth on an individual basis as we get into each individual nutrient. So as we start to dig in here and as I start to look at all of our major nutrients and minor nutrients, um, this is an important thing to keep in mind because we don't want to just be putting these nutrients into our system. We want to make sure that they're going in and they're ending up available to our plants. That's the end goal. So um, this, is, this is the first of many videos here talking about these, uh, these plant nutrients. If you find it useful, please subscribe. And um, make sure you stay tuned for the next one. We're going to start off just talking about nitrogen. I'm going to go through all the major nutrients, all of our secondary uh, macronutrients, and then all of our micronutrients. And uh, by the end of it, hopefully you'll have a solid understanding of how to introduce these nutrients to your system and how to manage them well. We use a few different insect types in here. Uh, the, the primary ones we use are ladybugs, okay? And um, they do a really nice job of just keeping populations low. So long as the ladybugs are happy and 